A man swallowed a wireless headphone. This is what happened to his esophagus. HB is a 39-year-old man presenting to the emergency room, panicked. He was shaking and crying as he tried to explain to the admitting nurse what had happened. HB was someone who was enjoying his life. He was a working man. He had recently gotten an extra bonus at work and thought to splurge and buy himself a pair of nice wireless headphones, something that he had been wanting for the last several years. Wired headphones were the only ones that he had ever had in his life, but with his new phone now, he wasn't able to do that anymore. He couldn't listen to music on his phone without these, but now that he had them, I can finally listen to some good music now, he thought. HB had had a long day and thought to take a nap. As he put on some quiet music, he laid down with his new headphones in his ears. He thought he had heard a knock on his front door, and so he took one of the earbuds out. He called out, but there was no response. Because the earbuds were new and knowing how this brand makes them, they were kind of slippery and gravity took hold as HB accidentally dropped the earbud. But immediately it touched the back of his throat. HB started to panic as he got up. The earbud had lodged in. He could feel it moving in his neck. In the bathroom now, HB was struggling. The more he tried to get the earbud out, the further down his throat it slipped. And then finally, he felt it at the base of his neck slide right down into his esophagus. When he pressed the button to locate his earbuds, he could hear it ringing in his stomach. In a panic, he drives to the emergency room where we are now. At examination, HB tells the medical team about the wireless earbud that he thought he just swallowed. At first, they didn't believe him. Earbuds can be a choking hazard. If it lodged into the throat, an earbud can obstruct the airway. HB can talk, so he's not choking, but something else could be wrong. He told them that he tried his hardest to push it out, but it just kept sliding down his throat and got swallowed. As we go further down the esophagus, it's possible that the earbud, because of its shape, could have lodged somewhere before getting into the stomach, causing an obstruction. It's here where there could be at least three problems that can deal damage over time and might not be immediately caught. First, your mouth to the other end is a continuous line spanning your GI tract. The diameter of the lumen, that inside hole, changes as the swallowed object passes through. The stomach lumen is wider than the small intestines. In these smaller areas, a hard object, uniquely shaped for the ears, is not meant to be in the GI tract. And this ensuing foreign body obstruction could start to cause a backup that'll cause pain, swelling, bloating, and in extreme cases can stretch the walls of the GI tract, stopping blood flow, starving it of oxygen, and causing permanent damage. Doctors send HB in for a scan of his abdomen to see if they can find any possible foreign body obstructions. He mentioned that he could feel something just underneath his chest and that the feeling started after the headphone was swallowed. Imaging should tell the medical team if something is really there or if HB is just thinking that he's feeling something, but there's something that the scan might not be able to show just yet, bringing us to the second problem that could be happening in HB. Wireless headphones today operate on typically small button batteries that get recharged when the buds are placed back into the case. But why would this be a problem? In this small science experiment, I put some water on top of a button battery inside a small piece of ham to simulate that battery getting lodged into a moist environment. And you'll see that after some time of consistent contact, the meat and the water discharge the battery at the negative terminal and burns through the ham. In the human body, these button battery burns can perforate the GI tract, which not only has a lot of blood flowing through it, so that's going to be lost, and maybe causing a massive bleed, but there's more. Gut bacteria is part of normal function, but when it leaks out into other parts of the body where it isn't supposed to be, it triggers the immune system to react. In an effort to protect the body, the immune system causes blood vessels to dilate and gets white blood cells in, dropping the blood pressure, meaning that less blood and oxygen gets to the organs, shutting them down. This doesn't happen immediately, can still happen even if the battery is dead, and it can take a few hours of constant battery contact with the GI mucosa to cause the burn from electrical discharge and the images of HB's abdomen may not be taken at a time when there's injury caused by that electrical discharge. Given how meticulously glued and fastened together this brand of wireless headphones tends to be, it's not likely that the battery breaks out in the GI tract in anyone who swallows this particular one. 
But let's be real, these things aren't always in the best of conditions. People might drop them, step on them, drop weights on them. They're cracked but still producing sound so they still get used. And in those conditions, or with cheaper brands where the headphone build quality isn't that great, the battery coming out while the GI tract is churning it along is possible. And who knows what leaks out, bringing us to the third problem dealing damage over time. The headphone inside the GI tract will get soaked in liquid, water, mucus, and stomach acid. This fluid can seep in, and if the battery doesn't come out, something could cause that battery to leak. Small batteries have a standardized code in their name. The first part has letters that give the chemical identification of the positive terminal. The last two numbers is how tall the battery is, and the remaining number is the diameter, both in millimeters. This battery content leakage, or even the batteries breaking and fragmenting inside the body, has been shown to injure people. Even lithium ion, like the batteries used in HB's brand of wireless headphone. As the results of the imaging come back for HB, doctors were able to locate and see the wireless headphone. Another physician was called in to send a scope down his throat to retrieve it. This was chosen over letting it just pass through his GI tract because it could cause more injury if allowed to pass through, either through causing a blockage, the battery causing a burn, or the battery leaking its contents out. HB was sedated as the operation was performed. When things like this happen, people sometimes are going to ask, does swallowing wireless headphones cause long-term damage, like microplastics? Will something show up years later? And the truth is, in acute, sudden cases like HB's, we're mostly concerned about that acute injury, because that's what's going to cause problems on the order of hours. Whether or not the plastics from the headphone material will cause long-term problems is something that's not tracked. And even if it was, there's so many different factors and differences among hundreds of millions of people who use these headphones daily that it's nearly impossible to create a controlled experimental setting whereby we can find and measure a difference between the people who swallowed wireless headphones versus those who didn't. And there's enough brands to make an additional difference, and there's differences in models between brands, and even the same model may have been made with different parts from different factories, maybe using slightly different battery or maybe different plastic casing. The answer to what happens long term is that we don't know. The healthiest way to think of it is to be aware of what you put in your body. Know that accidents can happen and try as best as you can to position yourself to avoid those accidents. In this case, don't fall asleep or lay down with small earbuds, elect to use a larger set of headphones over the ear in those settings. There's other cases where people swallowed wireless earbuds mistaking them for medicine. These are accidents and we can talk about how best to minimize the risk all day. These things happen spontaneously, sometimes not at the direct fault of anyone, and when you look at how many millions of people use this product every day, it's going to happen again, and in a way that we can't even imagine today. As the anesthesia wore off for HB's operation, he got his wireless earbud back. He dried it off and tested it, and it was still working. But most importantly, it was caught fairly quickly so that the risk of physical, electrical, and chemical injury was minimized as HB was able to make a full recovery. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.